I, I think that's a really profound uh, question and a really important um, question. Um, the, I mean, the BBC is built on a, a, a core value of uh, impartiality. In other words, we don't, we won't take sides. We we try to seek out the truth, or as near as we can get it. You can never find it, but you know, it was as near as we can get it. And that used to be interpreted when I started off um, from the BBC um, as you know. Conservative Party, Labour Party, you know, and a little bit of Lib Dems every now and then, or Liberal Party was then called every now and then. But, you know, that was kind of, it was binary in a way. And, I mean, the world's not like that. The world is much more uh, uh, fragmented um, uh, uh, than, than then. And I think that leads you to kind of into uh, two areas. One is, um, as a journalist, you can't repress anger. You can't, if people are feeling angry, they're feeling alienated, you, 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 you have a duty to say that to the world, in my, in, in my view. On the other hand, it goes back to what I, I was trying to say to your colleague um, just now. I do think we uh, have a job, too, to say, uh, to reflect as many different views as you can and to give voice to as many people as you can. The people who are heard a lot and maybe are very noisy, but equally the people who are not noisy but are, uh, uh, and, and are not heard. I mean, <clears throat> you know, it is very interesting having been through these various elections and, and election camp and uh, referenda, that, you know, you've got a job to make sure that you, the, the, the people whose voices normally are going unheard are also heard. That's quite difficult to get to those people because, you know, they're, they're more like that. But that's part of our job and I think that makes our our role uh, much more complicated, much more interesting in a way, uh, trying to find out the views of as many as you can and then broadcasting that to the whole. It goes back to this funnel that, that you know, we, we keep telling ourselves we're in with, 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 so, with social media. The danger is I can live in my own bubble. You know, I can live in my own bubble of Westminster, opera, whatever. And, and this is our job, I think, to, to push those bubbles out as far as we can and to make me understand your view, to understand your view and to make me aware of those things. And I think that, that I think the, the, the world is, it's much harder now to do that, but, I, but that just fires me up even more to say that's what we should be doing. Yeah. Uh, but you know, in, you know, it's just a small follow up before your question. Yeah. But in, in, you know, in the onslaught of fake news and various other things which are also accompanying the other wonderful things that technology is bringing to us and the fragmentation, is it possible at all for <coughs> legacy media or newsrooms to be just fact checking countering that. Is that at all possible journalism? Well, I mean, it's boiling the ocean to say that you can fact check. Uh, I mean, you can't, because you, 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 of course you can, you can fact check certain things. Um, uh, but, but, but I go back to what is our role. I mean, uh, I was with uh, the boss of a large, uh, very large West, um, West Coast company recently. He was saying to me that on Twitter, um, his, his understanding was 20% um, of Twitter users are bots. And you sort of think, that is a huge figure. Uh, and you know, if you generate the traffic that can come with it, it's probably even, even higher than that. So we've got a problem there. Um, now, we, we together can't simply act as the fact checker for uh, all of media and social media. You can't do that. <laughs> but we do have to kind of build our brands as places you can go that in all of that lot, you actually come to for the truth. I was, I was um, in a gallery a long, uh, uh, some time ago um, in the first Gulf War when uh, we were broadcasting. I was at the back of the gallery and we were doing uh, continuous news broadcasting. And there's a, a, a fantastic uh, correspondent called Charles Wheeler who uh, I simply adored. He, he was a, a, a real believer in being out there on the grounds. And he said to me, there was a story at that point of a, a chemical attack by another broadcaster, a chemical attack on Jerusalem. We, we know it didn't happen. But that was being reported on the wires. He said, OK, I'm going to go into the studio now, Tony, if you that's all right, and I'm going to say, let's just be clear what we know and what we don't know. And I think that role of what we know and what we don't know is so, so important. But the other thing which Charles Wheeler taught me, uh, he was a brilliant correspondent, is we need, in a world when actually you don't need to do too much apart from stare at a screen and to, to, to write news, all of us need to have people out there. I mean, I think the benefits of having more people on the ground, first-hand reporting now, is greater than at any other time. Because somebody who is, this is why 
you know, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, uh, well, again, after four, I'm always thrilled to be in Delhi. But 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 uh, after four months, to say we're investing in our news gathering operation because I really profoundly believe the best uh, we can do against all this uh, stuff is to have the person on the ground who can say that may be how it's being portrayed, but it's not. It's like this, and 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 that's kind of old fashioned. But there's nothing wrong with that, because we all know that, that, that reporters and correspondents and editors of, whose judgment you believe on is profoundly important to, to the business that we're all in. And I think we need more of that and less of the processing.